It's 2025 and you want to start making AR applications. What do you need? A game engine, an SDK, and a little bit of programming skills. These are the key ingredients required to create an AR application. But if you put a little bit of effort and subscribe to this channel, you can create super AR experiences like image detection, object detection, multi-user experience, and many more. All right, so the first thing you need is a game engine. And there are so many game engines out there like Unity, Unreal, Godot, just to name a few. For this video, we'll be using Unity. And I chose Unity because I've been using this for many, many years now. And I chose this back then because whenever a new SDK was released, it was first compatible with Unity and then rest of the game engines. Also, it had a huge community support, which it still has. So to get the latest version of Unity, head to the Unity's website and click on download Unity. Scroll down and download the Unity Hub based on your OS. Then follow the instruction on screen and install it. Once you have your Unity Hub open, you will be prompted to install the latest version of Unity. Right? Right now it's Unity 6. Maybe when you're watching this video later on, it could be another version. But I would highly recommend you to download the version of Unity that's latest at that given point. Because generally the latest version have some additional features which the previous version would not support or will not have it altogether. But there could be a scenario where an SDK is not compatible with the latest version of Unity, rather an older version. It's highly unlikely, but let's just consider this scenario. In such a case, you can navigate inside installs, click on install editor, click on archive and click on download archive. And from this page, you can select the Unity version of your choice and install it using hub installation. All right, for now, let's go ahead and install Unity 6. Now, the next step is to add modules to help us build our application. Now, by default, the dev tool that you get is Microsoft Visual Studio. If you have an ID of your choice, then you'll have to install that separately. Then, based on the platform that you want to build for, you can select those modules. Now, in our case, we are building for Android, so I've selected Android build support. And on the other hand, if you're developing for iOS, then you need to select iOS build support. Just to make things a bit more clear, there's no direct way to build for iOS from Windows platform. If you want to build for an iPhone, you need to have a Mac. I have have a dedicated videos on how to build AR experiences for iPhone and you can find the link for that in the description below. All right, so coming back to the Unity installation, if you scroll down here, you need to check the box for Windows build support IL2CPP as well, and then click on continue. You'll have to agree to the terms and condition and click on install. Now it's gonna take some time for the editor to get downloaded and installed. In the meantime, let's set up our Android device for AR development. So on your device, go inside settings, scroll down and go inside about device then navigate inside versions and tap on version number several times till it asks you to unlock your device and it says you are now a developer then go back to the setting menu select additional settings scroll down and select developer options now here Find the settings called USB debugging and enable that. Alright, so with that we have our development tool and the device set up. Now to develop an AR application, we can create a new project. Make sure that you have selected the latest version of Unity Editor. From the templates, you can select Universal 3D Core or you can select 3D built-in render pipeline. The choice is yours. Then give your project a name and click on create project. Once you have your project open, the first thing that you want to do is to switch the platform. And to do that, navigate inside File, Build Profiles, select Android and click on Switch Platform. Now, for AR development, there are so many SDKs that we can choose from. We have AR Foundation, Euphoria, Nantix, Lightship, just to name a few. Each one has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. And for this video, we'll be using Unity's AR Foundation. And to get that, you can navigate inside Windows, Package Manager, select Unity Registry and scroll down till you find AR Foundation and install it. Once that's done, you can scroll down till you find Google AR Core XR plugin and install this as well. And now to set up our project, navigate inside File, Build Profiles, select Player Settings. Here you can first change your company name, then navigate inside XR Plugin Management and select Google AR Core. Then you can go inside Project Validation and here it might show you two issues. First is that the Google AR Core requires a minimum API level of 24 and the second is that it requires OpenGL S3 graphics API. Now you can click on fix all to fix these issues. Then we can go back to the player settings, scroll down and make sure that the graphics API is selected as OpenGL S first and the second is Vulkan. Then scroll down and here make sure to uncheck override default package name and check it back again and here you should see the updated package name. 
Then make sure that the minimum API level is 24. The scripting backend is set to IL2CPP and the target architecture is set to ARM64. And with that, we have set up our project. And now to set up our scene, inside your hierarchy, you can select the main camera and delete it. Then right click on your hierarchy, navigate inside XR and add AR session. Now this adds the AR session game object with the AR session component, which controls the entire life cycle of the AR experience by enabling and disabling AR on your device. And it also has the AR input manager component, which enables world tracking. Now without this component, you won't be able to get the world space of your device. And hence this component is required for AR to function properly. Also remember that there has to be just one AR session and one AR input manager in your entire scene. If you have multiple of them, then they can cause issues and conflicts. Next, right click on your hierarchy, navigate inside XR and add XR origin mobile AR. Now this creates a game object called XR origin with the XR origin component. And this component is responsible for transforming the trackable features like planes and feature points into their final position, rotation and scale inside the scene. Now, if you want to know more about how this component is transforming a position in session space inside the Unity's world space, then you can check out their documentation, which I've linked below. Now, if you select the main camera, you can see some of the AR camera components like the AR camera manager, which lets you enable and disable the device's camera and configure other settings like autofocus, light estimation, facing direction and render mode. And the other component is the AR camera background. Now this component will render the video from the device's camera as a background of a scene if you want to. But for now, we can leave it as disabled. Now, since we are using universal render pipeline, there are some additional steps that we need to follow. If you're using 3D core render pipeline, then feel free to skip these steps and go to the next chapter. So what you need to do is navigate inside edit project settings, select the graphic tab, then inside your project window, navigate inside settings, select mobile RP asset and drag and drop it inside this field and then click on confirm. Then you can close this window, select mobile renderer, scroll down, click on add render features and add AR background render feature. And now we can add virtual content to our scene, which gets augmented when you build it onto your device. For now, we'll be using 3D primitives like a cube. And later on, you can replace this with any model of your choice. So to add the cube, right click on your hierarchy, navigate inside 3D objects and select cube. You can bring this slightly up and little forward and change its rotation as well. And now to build and test this, make sure that you're connected to your device. And when you do it for the first time, it will ask you if you want to allow USB debugging, click on allow. Then navigate inside file, build profiles. Make sure that the sample scene has been added. And here under the run devices, you should be able to see your phone that's connected. If not, you can click on refresh and connect it. And then click on build and run. Create a new folder called as builds. Give your APK a name and click on save. Here you might get a warning about handling input system. For now, we can ignore it. So click on yes. Now it's going to take some time for the application to get built. So we'll see you once that's done. All right. Once you have your application built successfully, it should launch automatically on your phone and you should be able to see the cube floating inside your room. All right. So now that you have started with your AR development journey, what are the next steps? You can download the AR foundation samples developed by Unity themselves from their GitHub repository. After downloading the project, you can open it inside Unity editor, switch the platform to Android and build all the scenes onto your device. Some of the samples might be grayed out and that's because it's not compatible with your device, but you can check out the ones that are available. And if you find one of these features to be interesting, and if you want us to make a video on that, then do let us know in the comments below. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.